kelp. It's the reason I became a mermaid. And if you've ever wanted to be a mermaid or you've ever idolized mermaids, well, you probably know that they consume a lot of kelp and a lot of iodine. All right, enough weirdo talk. I'm seriously gonna talk about kelp. I'm gonna talk about iodine, how it affects your thyroid. But I wanna put this out there. If you know someone that's dealing with hypothyroidism where they have a slow thyroid or an underactive thyroid or maybe even Hashimoto's like an autoimmune condition, give this video a quick share just so that it can get out there. Share it with your friends and family. All right, so the way that it works when it comes to iodine is the thyroid needs it, okay? The thyroid needs iodine in order to convert T4 into T3. And what T4 is, is basically the precursor to thyroid hormone T3. And for those of you that don't know, the thyroid is that butterfly-shaped gland that's in your throat that really is a standalone gland. It doesn't even have blood supply. It just kind of sits there standalone, creating thyroid hormone that is what regulates our metabolism, regulates our body heat, and also regulates a lot of neural function and a lot of brain function too. So why kelp though? Okay, any kind of sea plant or sea algae is going to be higher in minerals in general, simply because the soil isn't totally depleted like it is up here on earth. Down in the water, you have that retainment of minerals. So the seaweed, so the kelp, so the things like that, the algaes, they have a lot more minerals in general, specifically iodine. Now we know that we have an iodine issue to begin with, okay? We've been adding iodine to salt for so many years. We've been adding it since the early 1900s. But that's not the best way to get it. You see, we've been told that we can give kelp to our dogs to help with their dog thyroids, but how come we haven't made the translation that we need it for us? Well, here's how it actually works. You see, iodine is good for the thyroid, but only in moderation. That iodine affects the thyroid by working on something that's called thyroid peroxidase, okay? also known as TPO. It down-regulates it, it slows down that enzymatic activity which is good if you're hypothyroid because it allows your thyroid to regulate and work on its own a little bit better, essentially making it stronger and making it more efficient. So you can create more T3 from less T4 essentially. But this is a huge thing that you have to consider. If you're dealing with Hashimoto or you're dealing with any kind of autoimmune disease, down-regulating that TPO can affect those TPO antibodies and actually increase the stress on your thyroid. So this essentially can increase the autoimmune attack on the thyroid. Well, there is a study that I like to reference that kind of balances out that whole thyroid thing with the iodine and the selenium and all that stuff. Essentially what that is, is researchers found was that by taking in too much iodine, they had a decrease in what was called selenocysteine levels in the thyroid. These selenocysteine levels are again, what help the thyroid produce more of the thyroid hormone. How was this balanced out? Simply by taking selenium. You see, what we wanna do is we wanna rise the tide so that all ships rise. If we take in iodine, we wanna be taking in selenium as well. And the good thing is kelp has a good balance of iodine and selenium. So you're not just getting too much iodine like you would be getting from a supplement, you're getting a good balance of selenium as well. But full disclaimer, it's safe for me to say that if you're going to be taking in any iodine, you may wanna take a selenium supplement as well. And I have to give you full disclosure, I'm not a doctor, so don't go taking a ton of iodine. And realistically, don't wanna be exceeding 500 micrograms of iodine per day anyway. Although there are some research studies out there that show you can take up to 12 milligrams, me being in the position that I'm in, I highly recommend against that. You wanna make sure that you're starting small and start regulating how you feel. So if you're gonna take a kelp supplement, what you wanna do is you wanna start small. Maybe take half a tab or try using a kelp powder so that you can really modulate how much you take and just closely monitor your thyroid. Another thing that you can do is you can take a thermometer and you can literally put it in your armpit first thing in the morning or under your tongue, depending which kind of thermometer you're using and monitor your actual body temperature. Then start taking a kelp supplement. If your body temperature starts to increase, then more than likely you are thyroid deficient and you're getting some benefit out of the iodine and the selenium or out of the kelp in this case. Now, if you start to see that it plateaus or it starts to drop, well, then you might be dealing with an autoimmune issue and you may wanna pay a little bit more attention to working on your antibodies versus working on the thyroid directly. So at the end of the day, why should you take kelp? because you're going to get a balance of minerals that's gonna help your mood, it's gonna help your body, it's gonna help your nerve function, and it's gonna give your thyroid that boost that it needs. So as always, keep it locked in here, and if you know someone that's gonna get a benefit out of helping their thyroid by becoming a mermaid, please make sure you give this video a share. I'll see you soon.